Um, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. So, um, I wanted to play some World of Goo because, uh, World of Goo 2 was announced at the Game Awards. And I also wanted to talk about the Game Awards. And I also wanted to talk about some of my, uh, picks for, like, what I would consider are were really good games and maybe, like, throw them as uh, category winners for what was considered at the Game Awards. And uh, also maybe could talk about some of the scummy things that happened at the Game Awards. But so I'm, I'm kind of snowballing all of this into one video and then uh, tentatively, um, you know, doing a, a, a World of Goo playthrough. I, I don't think I'll be doing a full playthrough, mostly because I don't know if it'll do very well on this channel. Uh, it, you, you know, I, I know what y'all want and this isn't it, but you know, in the interest of uh, trying something, I, I figure I'll, I'll, I'll try this. We'll, we'll, we'll give it a go and we'll give it a goo, you know? And we'll see if uh, maybe there's an audience for this. So I have on my uh, other monitor between levels, uh, I'm gonna be going through some of the, the um, categories here and uh, talking about what, you know, I thought would have been a good winner, uh, you know, like, not to say that I disagree with everything that was at the Game Awards, of course, that would be ridiculous. That would just be super contrarian. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'd like to talk about things I think are bare mentioning as, you know, good um, candidates. So let's look at uh, Player's Voice. This was uh, Baldur's Gate 3, Cyberpunk 2077, Phantom Liberty, Genshin Impact. I always forget about Genshin Impact. Like, I, I forget that that game exists. Marvel's Spider-Man 2, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. Um, obviously, this is like the, um, kind of like the, the, the throw them a bone category. Like, uh, no one's ever going to be happy about what won. So, you know, this is the, this is the category to keep people from complaining too loudly. IMO. You know, I think that that's going to be... Uh, that's what this is for because you know like no matter what wins i i always see complainers uh despite you know like there's there's like zero objectivity here of course Even, no matter who wins it's, it's super subjective what your like game of the year was so um that being said Baldur's gate 3 i think that's a good choice and i'm i it was not surprised to see that win anything um and i'm glad that it did one you know win a bunch of things i i think it deserves as much as it did i you know uh spoiler it, it won game of the year and i think it's a good choice uh, clearly there's a lot of work and love having been put into that game like it's just a huge collage of so many people's talents and and love being put into it like I, I can't imagine anyone really being too upset with uh Baldur's Gate being a winner of anything so you know I, I think it's a good I, I was glad to see it win player's choice it's it's a kind of um breath of fresh air from the Steam Awards which are going to be coming up uh at the end of the month and we're going to see the nominations for that and that always kind of makes me feel a little bit ill um not too ill, just just a little bit ill. What are you trying to tell me? Been undisturbed for thousands of years until now. I haven't played this game for a very long time. And uh, it's one of the reasons, like, uh, you know, when I saw World of Goo was announced, I was like, yes, I have not played World of Goo in so, so long. And uh, I, I would say that this was like my most excited, like, I was most excited about this announcement than any of the other stuff. Um, but we'll talk about some of the announcements as well. Uh, next one up was Best Adaptation. Celebrating games inspired, game inspired projects across entertainment, including TV, movie, comics, and more. What does that mean? What? Do, wait, what? Oh, okay, sorry. These are adaptations of games. So there's Castlevania, Nocturne, Gran Turismo, The Last of Us. How come... How about how come cyberpunk isn't on here? Whoa, uh, one of my cats fell off. Or something. Sorry, cat. Here, let me put your bed back up there. Um, didn't the cyberpunk anime come out 
this year or was that last year? It stands to reason if it's not on here, it must not have come out this year, but I thought it came out this year. I'm talking about the anime, you know. Uh, I heard nothing but good things for it, so I'm kind of surprised it get no mention. Uh, I watched The Last of Us series. I really liked it. I have not played the game, so I had nothing to compare it to, but I think that if a uh, series adaptation of a game comes out and I watch it and it's not terrible, then that's actually a huge win. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, really good. I, I, you know, what can I say more about that? I, uh, I am actually like hugely cynical about um, most productions or stories based in any kind of zombie universe or post-apocalyptic universe because I find them seriously cynical. I, I'm not a huge fan of the huge like, oh, humans actually deserve to die or uh, to, to, to go extinct and they deserve the zombie world that they've created because they're actually hugely destructive. I just think that that's a really negative take, but um, I was uh, happy to, you know, I was, I was actually really pleased with um, uh, The Last of Us as a, as a production. Okay, we're, we're making balloons. Well, we're, we're ballooning this, these gateways up. And then I think we're ballooning the actual... Yeah, we're ballooning this up too. We might need to uh, borrow a couple of these. This is a pretty good game to uh, talk over because it, it, you know, you don't have to apply too much thought to it. So yeah, that is best as adaptation. Can't, I don't really have much thoughts on that. Most anticipated game. I think this is a completely pointless category, to be honest. What does that even mean? How do you, how do you categorize that? 80s 2, like a dragon, infinite wealth. How have I never, I've never even heard of that. Like a dragon, infinite wealth. Like a dragon, infinite wealth. How, how is it that a game is nominated for most anticipated? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I guess I have heard of this. This is uh, in the Yakuza universe. Yeah. Um, the, you <laughs> The Like a Dragon series is one that I, I keep wanting to jump into, but uh, Sega keeps cramming their games with Denuvo, so I keep not uh, picking them up when they're severely discounted. I have played the Yakuza games, and I even thought of doing a series. In fact, I even recorded um, episodes of Yakuza 0, and uh, kind of I guess I thought better of it, or I thought that maybe people would not be very interested in it in that series I, if, you, if you are let me know in the comments maybe i'm wrong about that um it is a very long commitment so one reason i was kind of not on board is because i i saw the daunting task ahead of me and thought that it would just you know you know it was a fleeting fleeting thought and i didn't really think it was gonna add up to much is this uh, gonna work Sort of, not really. Uh, this is it. This is it. I wouldn't say this is tricky at all. I just gotta basically prop up against. I think I can. These are one. Yeah, you can actually reuse these ones. I'm just gonna let that climb up. So yeah, sorry. I, I didn't mean to disrespect like a dragon. That one. That one is actually. Um, I can understand that being very anticipated. Tekken 8. Um, not hugely into fighting games, you know, but. Uh, I, I have fought. I have fought in a game before. So I, I you know, I'm okay with that. Best esports team. Uh, skip. I have no idea. Zero context. Best esports game. Counter Strike 2. That's a weird one. This is, that's kind of divisive. Because, like, uh, Counter Strike 2, um, when it came out, I think it upset quite a lot of people. So, cause like, you know, there's a whole like, what the heck, how does, how does Valve follow up with Counter-Strike Global Offensive, uh, and how do they, how do they, I don't know, not split their, their player base? Well, what they do is they completely, you know, Thanos snap the original from existence. And I know, I know that really upset people and I get why, um, but I also, 
I guess I empathize with the with you know I empathize with a large company like Valve. I empathize with the fact that th there was not really a good uh, decision there that was going to keep people happy. This is kind of like a huge tangent, so I, I don't think that this is going to this is really relevant to be honest. Uh, Dota 2, uh, it's wild to me that Dota 2 is on there. I guess it's still like it's one of the biggest esports games, so that makes sense. League of Legends, PUBG. Mo sorry, PUBG Mobile? <laughs> what? PUBG Mobile? Uh, not to yuck anyone's yum or anything, but are, are people... Uh, is it that popular? Are people really playing uh, a, a, an FPS game on mobile that much? Gosh, I remember, like, telling people why I didn't like playing FPS games on a console with, a, like, an analog stick. Uh... I can't imagine playing an FPS, especially a competitive one, on a mobile. That sounds like a nightmare. Are you- are, are some of y'all doing that? Good lord. I guess I'm old man screaming at Cloud now. Um, best eSport event. Uh, skip. Have no context. Best eSports coach. Skip. Best esports athlete skip. There was a lot of time dedicated to this. You know, these are hardworking people, I'm sure, but I have no idea who they are. Content creator of the year. <laughs> well, I have some invested interest here. Clearly, the content creator of the year was uh, Big Simple with... No, honestly, even in the traditional roguelike uh, like community space, I wouldn't even rank myself top 10. I'm sure there's many people doing a better job than I do so um yeah I, I i don't know i'm not i'm not a hugely competitive person to be honest um because I, I you know I, I i don't really expect to win things so i'm like eh whatever uh let someone who wants it more have it i don't care um but hey content creator of the year congratulations iron mouse i I've, i'm sorry I've, I've never heard of you i don't know who you are what do they do what do they what do they play do they do they play caves of cud if they played caves of cud i i would actually cheer cheer i would clap um but as uh, something tells me that they don't do that so um best multiplayer game baldur's gate 3 yeah that's fair i'm cool with that and I, you know what it's kind of <laughs> uh, maybe baldur's gate 3 is not a good sele select or pick for best multiplayer game because you is, can you only play... Is that game, like, max four players? Because I know your team is max four players, right? So, like, uh, you know, that's it's, it's kind of an odd one for best multiplayer game. Now, the next one I do actually have, like... I, I guess, okay, what would be my best... What's the best multiplayer game? I've got uh, on my other monitor here um, my... 2023 uh, list of games that I, I added to my account this year. Uh, please forgive the uh, the pause game for a moment. Why is Quake 2 on there? That doesn't make sense. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. What what came out that I cared about that was multiplayer? Um, not a lot. Well, you know, technically. Lethal Company came out this year. That seems like, you know, a, a solid pick. Maybe Inkbound? I did play a lot of Inkbound. And I didn't play too much of it multiplayer, but I, I thought it was pretty good. Um, but that's, I think that's even less than four players. I think you could, well, maybe it is exactly four players when I think about it. But anyway, um, uh, Baldur's Gate's fine. Like, at least, you know, I think a multiplayer game that you could see yourself playing for several hours, uh, meaning like a hundred hours, um, is, it's a, it's a fair choice, you know, like, can't really do much better than that. Any game, any game that you could see yourself playing for a hundred hours is worthy of some kind of win. Um, this is an interesting level, I guess, once we have that suck going on, we can... Are there... Is there other... Oh, there's lads down here. Oops. I'm gonna have to reset this stage. Because I have to... I have to get um, our friendos down there. So let's... Let's do that. 
on. Um, yeah, what's a good multiplayer game? I, I like, I don't understand. Like, the, the game awards are happening after some games have come out. Like, I, I, I'm gonna mention Lethal Company because obviously that's that's so popular right now, and I think for good reason, um, especially amongst streamers and you know amongst like. I think I think there's a really good reasons why it's it's doing so well um, And yet that's coming out after the game awards. Does that mean it's considered next year for the game awards? It doesn't seem like that would be the case I don't think that they care enough to, to have that kind of scrutiny But I also don't think lethal company would win because it seems to me like um, Game awards do ha seem to favor polish over innovation, which is something I'm going to maybe talk about in a second. Uh, IMO, I'm going to just just go ahead and assume IMO on the end of everything here. Uh, I'm just I'm just chaining my little lads over here. Hold on, let's get that last last dude there. Come on, uh, I guess we can just like throw him on there. There we go. All right, and now we uh, go ahead and. Pull this back together. Oh no, oh, that's fine. Now that they're awake, you can. Uh, I, I, you have to be careful not to chain the uh, the black goos together because they're permanent. All right, now we will try and and make our little Eiffel Tower here. Oop, don't don't grab the the black ones. Oh no. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Cool. Um, let me look at Inkbound. I didn't really play all that many multiplayer games this year, to be honest. Maybe Mr. Sun's Hatbox, but I, I don't. That's not like I, I like that game, but I don't know if it's worthy of a game of the year. Um. Looking through, I, I played a lot of, a little bit of Guilty Gear Strive. In fact, I'm going to be playing a little bit of Guilty Gear Strive after this. And, but I don't think, you know, that, that came out a couple, like a couple years ago now. And I, you know, it's, it's good. So yeah, I don't, I don't know about multiplayer games. Um, best sim strategy though. Here's the weird part. And I've mentioned this a little bit with, uh, Lethal Company, right? Like lethal company i think is worthy of of, of a win um but like does it win this year or does it win next year right best sim strategy Pik pikmin 4 um against the storm can't comes out today like 1.0 came out today and so it's come out after the game awards and i think it's honestly just kind of a crime that that doesn't win something i'm, I'm sure it's uh, it's going to be nominated for um some kind of award it'll probably be on the indie game awards um but i i honestly think that uh, against the storm is like one of the best strategy games i've seen in years like it's so stupidly innovative uh and it you know it like it gives gets me to play uh you know a strategy game and like, though I do have patience, uh, I I don't really have a lot of patience for games that like I gotta I gotta do kind of like research on. I know that sounds like ridiculous considering um, the games I do play. It, it's a weird mix. I, I can't really explain it too well. <clears throat> um, but just kind of take my word for it that uh, you know I do have a line for how complicated a game can be before I. Uh, give up and to me I think against the storm played this perfect balance of like it's um, It's complicated. It's deep but like it's not so deep that uh, That that I can't like it's not accessible it is accessible and it gets it gets more complicated um, If you you know give it time so I just think it's weird. I mean, okay company of heroes 3 sure uh fire emblem engage i haven't played a fire emblem game basically ever uh city skylines 2 that's a weird one see like that game 
I believe is in early access now, right? Let me just let me just confirm that. City Skylines 2. Oh, it's out out. It should be in early access. As I, as I understand it, it's got problems right now. Um so I, I that's a that's a that's kind of a weird one. Um yeah, that's that's strange that it's not in early access. Okay, well, whatever. It, this is going to get controversial. Um, I liked Pikmin 4 a lot. I think it's basically the new standard for Pikmin game. I, I thought it was really, really excellent. Um, so it's fine. I'm not going to... I'm not. I'm definitely not going to say it didn't deserve it. Advanced Wars 1 plus Reboot Camp. That's a little bit of an odd one because it's like... I don't know. A remake. And I have kind of conflicted feelings about reboots or remakes um being nominated because it's like um are they really like if they're completely faithful remakes to the game in the first place why should they win weren't they already up for like uh you know a, a, an award the first time they came out and if they didn't win then why should they win now or if they did win then then didn't they already have their day in the sun? It seems to me uh, a little bit unfair for a remake to, you know, be given that. I mean, uh, hey, let me put it this way. Maybe it should be its own award, right? Like most most faithful remake. Um, like I'm not, I, I don't want to say, like I don't want to fe make it sound like I I'm undervaluing these games because, you know, like I think about things like System Shock 1, which eventually I will play and maybe even do a series on. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful that um, a game like that has been made accessible again, has been made uh, like it's been given a fresh coat of paint and, and now people will get to enjoy it that might not have initially because of how it looks or because of how it plays, because it is uh you know of its time so i do think that the, i think it should be its own award because clearly we're going to be continuing with this trend of like remade games game game remakes and like you can't stop it right and the, the games are still good they deserve to be played um i think that like spyro trilogy was like one of my favorite games in the last few years i really enjoyed that like it was so it was faithful and it also gave it a fresh coat of paint and it also like br br uh, breathed new life into some of the uh characters and and animations like it it was i think as perfect as a remake can make i know people are you know there's some people that don't don't agree that's fine you're you're welcome to to you you know what your opinion uh i know that sounds snarky but i don't mean it as such so you know the remakes they're here they're they're here now like it's we we have to we have to contend i just don't know if they deserve to be put alongside other games that spent that, that had a more energy put into um like innovation or like um, being the best of its genre, like a new original game. But anyway, Pikmin 4, I don't know why, how I got into remakes, but... Best sports racing game. Uh, I didn't really play any of these and I didn't really play many sports games. I'm not into sports games. Uh, not that they're not valid. They're just not my tastes. Um, I kind of like when sports games, uh, like almost blend genres or when they get like I, I like it when sports games are campy like some of my favorite sports games that i i played a ton of with my cousin were um things like slugfest and like the really uh over the top um like violent ones uh where it's like you know you can you can play you're playing hockey but then also you can beat the crap out of the goalie you know like i thought that that was always fun um and then they had you know had their fair share of like cheat codes that would uh continue to you know breathe replayability into it and then uh, you know they were just a lot of fun i actually i've uh i've recently re 
rebought. Let's just put it that way. Reacquired one of my favorite sports games of all time, which was a Hot Shots Golf 3 and 4 on the PS2. And I'm really looking forward to playing those games because um, Hot Shots Golf is just fantastic. I, I somehow, for some reason, I always enjoyed it more than the Mario Golf games. I don't know. For some reason, they, they seem to just a little bit more um, creative, weirdly, than the Mario Golf games. I don't know how, how I'm getting on this tangent, but like sports games, I don't really have a lot of... Um, I didn't play too many sports games at all, basically. Am I actually going to meet the quota? I think I might. I actually, I, I would like to play Forza uh, Motorsport. It's one of the few racing games that kind of like looked appealing to me um, for its like open world nature. So that seems kind of cool. Uh, sorry, uh, the game pauses occasionally because I have to um, alt tab so I can go through this list. Best family game. Uh, what a weird category. What a there were so many family games that came out this year. Um, you know, there was like, you know, Fay Farm and Coral Farm, and there was a lot of farming games. So many farming games came out. So many like cozy games. Um, I'm starting to feel, I'm, I'm starting to get that feeling whenever I hear cozy now, where it just feels like a markety kind of buzzword. Um, not that, you know, there's anything wrong with that. It's, you know, it definitely speaks to what kind of game you're trying to make, but, uh, you know, it doesn't, it, it's not, it, it, hearing cozy does not make a instant buy for me. Um, so, I don't know, best family game, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, sure. I had really conflicted feelings about Super Mario Wonder, to be honest. Uh, I did play it, I didn't beat it. Um, there were good things in it for sure. I, I I think it was kind of overblown a little bit, to be honest. I know that's not going to be a popular opinion, but um, it is what it is. I, I don't want to have a divisive opinion. I'd rather just kind of keep things uh, pretty, you know, neutral, but yeah. But yeah, let's uh, let's move on. I, I don't know what would be my best. What was the best family game of the year? My favorite family ga game of the year. I don't know if I had a favorite family game of the year. Um, I liked Gravity Circuit, but it, that's like kind of a um, a very Mega Man esque game. Like that's fine for the family. What does that mean? Like, does that mean? granddad can play it um if that's what it means then oh uh, uh, no hold on if that's what it means if it just means it's very accessible then um okay i yeah uh, but like super mario bros wonder was difficult at times so i don't know what the bar is i i think that gravity circuit contributed more in terms of like an innovative game but it's also more indie and it's less polished so that's that's at the end of the day i think that's what wins right um i, I forgot to mention for like sim by the way sim and strategy dot age really deserves a mention as well like that was really good and i know the dev has been working like really hard on making that as good as it is like it's it's a very deep game and it it deserves uh some kind of mention but like this is the problem with the game awards right is like all of the indies are lumped into exactly one category sorry two categories we have best indie game and then best uh upcoming whatever something and uh this just like i don't know it kind of gives me a queasy feeling of like well that's i don't know if that's very respectful of like the uh, amount of time and dedication and work that um, goes into, you know, indie, some of these indie games. Like, I know that, uh, you know, some of these uh, AAA games like, you know, Super Mario Wonder, for instance, has basically an army of people working on it. Um, and, you know, that's that's valid, of course, like that that time and effort is also valid, but it's it does um, sometimes feel oh, oh, oh no. 
<clears throat> it does kind of seem like when you're lumping like oh yeah here's the here's the indie corner it's sort of like the you know, thanksgiving dinner <laughs> like there's where the kids sit meanwhile here's the big big boy table uh we're gonna hand out all uh all, you know have the actual turkey dinner over here um y'all play nice over there okay We'll talk about the Indie uh, Game Awards as well, though. Like, uh, I do want to talk about that at some point. Um, hold on, this this is a this is a fun level. I really like this level. Let me just kind of get things going, and then I want to uh, kind of like. I don't know if it's gonna like all come crashing down. I, I, I'm going to concentrate for exactly this one part. Okay, okay. This is, this is good. No! Oh, 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 oh. Is it falling? Okay, um, I think I need to get it a little bit higher up here because i yeah eventually it just gets slurped up there there we go we uh it got a little bit broken actually that's probably good because it means i get to keep the the goo ball um so where do we go now do we go straight up where are we going Oh, I see. These eyeballs count as balloons. I forgot about this. This is one of the reasons I wanted to replay this game. Is, um... Like, this game is so creative. And it's it's so much fun. Um... Best family game. I don't know. That's, that's such a weird category to me. Uh, but, yeah, whatever. Best fighting game. I, I'm gonna pass on this. I'm really not a... a, a authority on this at all i haven't played too many fighting games period um best rpg i mean that that one speaks for itself but some of these other ones are worth uh, mentioning i mean sea of stars i know there's a huge conversation this year about what 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 counts as an indie game right sea of stars is on here as best rpg now is that game not an indie game so how come like uh, not that it doesn't deserve it at all. I, I, of course it deserves it, but like, so do all, I think, you know, all indie games bear mentioning at some point, like for the amount of uh, work and effort that go into them. But like, you know, if Gravity Circuit isn't the best, you know, uh, nominated for best family game, uh, then then what is uh, Sea of Stars doing on best RPG? It just feels all over the place. Um, it definitely, I feel like the Game Awards feels like what someone someone's idea of what the game awards should look like and not actually like given the proper thought of like what should actually win like and you know this is one of the reasons i wanted to talk about this is like there is so much going on at the game awards and i know there was like there was a petition for for someone literally anyone to actually talk about what's going on and in gaza and and to to the palestinians and it's like that was completely ignored despite you know the fact that uh, they were talking about ukraine last year and i know that that's like really political but it's like yeah that's the point like y'all I, I know we're all enjoying our video games here but uh at a certain point you know people are are dying and like uh we need to put a pause no pun intended on the video games for just a moment uh, and like mention that, like talk about how it, how miserable it is. Like, you know, cause the more people that talk about it, um, the more some, the more likely something might actually get done about it. And, you know, I, I know it's like, what, what can, what can Kef, uh, Jeff do? <laughs> but like at the same time, it's like, he didn't you don't even want to mention it you don't even want like let's just completely ignore it right it's uh like i've done more mentioning it in this goofy world of goo playthrough than they than they could have done in like a, a massive production like three hour production 
no one talked about it, right? Um, and it, it, it feels at a certain point on purpose. Uh, and in speaking of like how much time is dedicated to things, like you're talking about like 30 seconds. So they apparently had 30 seconds, a winner, someone who came up after all that work. Like this is, this is the award ceremony dedicated to uh, people who won in their eyes game of the year. This is the whole, like, that's the whole point, right? And then you have the people that won coming up and they're given 30 seconds uh, to talk. They're given 30 seconds. Can you imagine getting anything said in 30 seconds? I, I like, I honestly want you to, like, I know, I know we're, we're having a goof, you know, this is just for fun, right? Imagine, like, and I'm sure maybe you've even done this. Maybe you're a developer and you've thought about what you would say at an award ceremony for the hard work that you've put into something. Imagine trying to fit and, and you, you have your like, the adrenaline is rushing through your, you're, you're trying to, you know, put words in your mouth. You're trying to get words out of your mouth. You have 30 seconds to thank as many people as possible and also like talk for even at all about how how it means to you what the what the award means uh what the game meant to you whoops like you know you had you oh, 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 oh you're trying to put all of that into words right there in 30 seconds and then they and then they're gonna uh put the <laughs> turn the, the the music on and the please wrap it up wrap it up please Excuse me, you are too happy right now? You're a game developer. You're not supposed to be happy, actually. You're supposed to get back to the office. Someone someone uh, uh, I saw on Twitter said it best. is like, I can't believe they actually like replicated the idea of crunch culture into the game awards. That was truly like it, it is a, a, an amazing representation of, you know, uh, how much actual game developers are respected in the industry. Which is to say, they're not at all. Um, really groundbreaking stuff. Love that. So I, I, I think it, you know, and I'm not, I'm not gonna get it wrong, but like someone was talking about how like they were commemorating their award to, to you know, their past loved ones, and they're like, please wrap it up. <laughs> like, we're, you know, we're done with this. We're moving on to the next advertisement. Oh, gee whiz. Best action adventure game, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Sure. Um, that's fine. You know, I think that Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is going to win something and probably it deserves to. I did play it. I didn't get that far in it. Um, I enjoyed what I played. It clearly has a lot uh, of love put into it. It's a good game. I'm not gonna besmirch it even a little bit. I think it, it is good. Um, as far as like, you know, uh, open world adventure games go. Um, and I know that sounds like a, a backhanded comp, you know, compliment. I don't mean it really as such. It's, it's just like, I, I always burn out on, uh, open world, like adventure games. Uh, I know that's, you know, caves of code. Uh, but, you know, I, I like any, any kind of third person or even first person uh, action adventure open world game I, I burn out on them almost instantly now like it's like i've played so many of them and they all play very similarly not to say that tears of the kingdom isn't novel it actually does quite a bit of good stuff um i finally got my uh, nuts and bolts open world game and uh, I'm, I'm 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 happy about that um where are we going are we just are we we're just going know so yeah uh zelda tears of the kingdom certainly it deserves to win something what is happening am i supposed to go over that okay hold on a second i gotta i have to apply actual thought to this portion of the game give me give me one second oh okay now, now we can we can continue rambling. Um, was there other 
action adventure games that came out? I don't think so. I mean, uh, Elden Ring. <laughs> I mean, the Elden Ring uh, <laughs> thing last year was was uh, interesting, but um, you know, they 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 got that figured out this year at least. I'm talking about the the kid that showed up, and I don't know what. I'll never know or understand what that child said. What? Wh maybe he was trying to warn us of like impending doom and, and we didn't listen. We didn't listen to him. So I, I don't know. Um, but, you know, I, I'm sure he's out there somewhere. But uh, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, best action adventure game. I don't know. Uh, does like... I was gonna say, um, does Shadows of Doubt count? Like, where does Shadows of Doubt go? Should that go in Strategy Sim? Because I, I was gonna say that deserves Game of the Year for something. And Shadows of Doubt is like one of the most innovative games. I guess best M Sim, right? But what, what is that? There's, there's been a also a discussion about what the best M Sim. What is it? What is an M Sim? You know, what is an M Sim? Oh no, I think I'm, I'm messing up. I have to, I have to, uh, put a, a, a more aggressive kink in this. Okay, there we go, there we go. Perfect. I feel like these flies are almost like blue balls. Yeah, like, where would you put Shadows of Doubt? I guess it's, it's an M-Sim. But, like, I haven't really even seen a game like that. It's almost a, a, a completely new genre. Um, Star Wars Jedi... Su Jedi... 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 <laughs> Yo, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Uh, I... I'm, I can't not think that now. Um, I didn't play it. I have played some of the first game. Um, and I liked it. I didn't get through it. I wanted to. Um... Resident Evil 4. I, I intend to play through the Resident Evil series at some point, but it's another game that I know will not be a very popular series for me, so um, therefore I have to play it in my own time, and I don't have very much of my own time, so I will probably... it'll take me a while to actually get to it. Um, yeah, didn't didn't uh, didn't really get, get to Resident Evil 4. Um, I, in fact, I, I don't own it, so... Hello? We have, uh, we have balloons. I'm the balloon man. Oh no. There's, there's squishing and they're squashing my stuff. Oh no, they're, they're gonna... They're, they're cramping my style here. Hold on. Get, get back up there. Okay. So we gotta, we gotta do that again. Um... Be one second here. Just gotta make sure that the the goo lads have something to, to goo goo onto. Um, best RPG. I mean, yeah. It, uh, sorry, we already did that one. Best action game. Armored Core Six. I think that is a completely reasonable thing. That was, yeah. Um, of course. Like, wh what else would you give it to? There's Dead Island 2, Ghost Runner 2, Hi-Fi Rush. I know Hi-Fi Rush was good. Um, I heard very good things about it. I wanted to play it, um, but I think that's also a Sega game, and they also put uh, De Nuvo on that, and so therefore I didn't get to it. Let me just double check that before I besmirch the good name of... Uh, oh, no, that's Bethesda Studios. That is apparently from Bethesda? But either way, it, it does have De Nuvo on there so um yeah I, I didn't pick that up uh day one. Oh, I wouldn't mind it looks like a fun game um okay hold on we gotta grab some balloons from over here no come on balloon there we go uh I liked I really liked Suda Regalia uh, Suda Regalia w deserves, a, a, you know, how about we get an award for best lo-fi game, you know? Best uh, lo low, like, fidelity game would be good. I haven't played Dead Island 2. I think that was an epic exclusive, so I haven't gotten around to it. 
<clears throat> Ghost Runner 2. I have played Ghost Runner 1. I wouldn't mind playing Ghost Runner 2. Like, this is the thing, right? There were so many games this year. There were so many games. And, and this is the other thing that was never mentioned at all in the Game Awards is there were so many games and there were so many layoffs. Like, I know we all want to have fun and we don't, we, we want to ignore the, 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 terrible things that are happening in the world but good lord this was one of the worst years for layoffs i think I, like ever and it's still happening like every day i see uh whoops i see a um a game studio shutting down because they're like yeah we, we just we don't have enough we don't have any money <laughs> and like studios laying off their developers and it's like um when are we going to have that conversation? I know we're having the conversation right now of like, you know, what was the best thingy? The best thing that, you know, deserves the thing. Let's let's hand out some uh, faux gold. Um, but like also uh, a lot of people just lost their job this year and all of the money is just being like sucked up by uh, weird CEOs that, you know, are... are making making that fat stock fatter like it's it's weird and it's uncomfortable and like it, it kind of sucks in fact it really sucks and like if it, if something isn't said uh, about that at the game awards and like when when can when can that uncomfortable conversation happen we have a three hour award ceremony with 30 seconds dedicated to actual like accepting awards per winner um and then just like the rest of it is advertisement and the, you know the uncomfortable thing about that is of course they can't dedicate time to saying that the games industry is actually like taking a beating right now because they are the games industry like they it's all advertising and they're all making their their buck so like what when it like it's it's kind of like the you know the Koch brothers inviting you know Greenpeace to their let's talk about how uh, climate change isn't actually happening right you like you can't expect them to actually want to have an uncomfortable conversation because they're part of the problem right um but you know we can't we can't say that we can't that that can't we can't happen we can't talk about that no uh, let's talk about innovation and accessibility. Now, this is really funny to me for a number of reasons. Recognizing uh, recognizing software and or hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played and enjoyed by an even wider audience. Now, this is, an, this is a conversation I actually have a huge uh, investment in. Um, emotionally speaking but let's have a look at the winner here forza motorsport now forza motorsport or forza if you like um it has mostly negative reviews on steam that's interesting uh it requires you to have the xbox live account to play it um which is an odd choice the view may be changed over the course of time depending on the current state of the game and compared to other Older titles all the way back to Forza Motorsport 2. When I is this the right game? Yeah, this came out this year. In fact, it came out a month ago. Well, sorry, two months ago. Um Ignore the underlying issues with the game despite this was a this was a Forza is a Microsoft affair, right? It's Xbox Game Studios. And I think the funny thing to me about them winning an accessibility award is um microsoft just got caught a little bit of flack for the fact that they are like discontinuing third-party support for controllers on their system uh which is basically like all of the accessibility controls like that you know anyone who's using anything any third-party controller um because they need to <laughs> because uh you know they're you know maybe their their hands are not able to hold uh an xbox controller xbox brand controller so they're using um something third party they they're just kind of like well 
uh, you're shit out of luck, actually. Um, you're gonna have to buy the Xbox brand accessibility controller. We went ahead and made you a designated accessibility controller, so you're gonna have to go ahead and use that. Um, which is a little odd, uh, especially considering the price of the Xbox ac accessibility controller. Xbox accessibility controller is um let's see price this is gonna be in canadian mind you adaptive controller on their yeah is a hundred and thirty dollars canadian a hundred and thirty dollars canadian i understand that controllers are expensive you know like even a like generally speaking xbox controller is now like a hundred dollars but the accessibility controller is 130 dollars canadian so it's probably like a hundred dollars american um usd so like you know I, I think that it's it's just kind of you know that conversation didn't happen uh worth mentioning that i suppose forza motorsport sure why diablo 4 i mean i guess what constitutes as a something that deserves winning of a accessibility award if it has enough features i suppose that makes it playable on enough machines um i'm not gonna downplay that you know i, I those those things are important to me um but i do i guess i do question like uh how these things kind of got decided like what what made uh forza motorsport win i'd like to know uh whoops you almost you almost got lost there bud uh did i just yeah i did okay let's retry that best vr ar game now that's an interesting one because like i think that some people are surprised that the vr industry is still kicking because like the the you know the rush for vr is is i think it's fair to say it's no longer as uh energetic it's no longer oh okay well I, let's hope that i didn't need that one let me see here okay we're, we're fine um and i think that it, that's another thing that needs to be uh, it, we're never gonna have that conversation about how basically facebook took a very niche market like vr uh, and a not very accessible one because it's the early adopt, you know, early adoption was really expensive to get into VR and split that market in half. Um, and then, uh, like, you know, basically made it so half, half the games in that market were inaccessible. Um, meanwhile, uh, Val it bears mentioning that Valve just released a big update for their VR, uh, like support that allows you to use basically all of the meta devices via a link. So you can use like the standalone headsets via link. And I think that right now is only for the meta uh, headsets, not yet for like the, the official Valve ones, but I'm not sure like a lot of this is lost on me a bit. I do play VR games. Um, I don't play them off for the channel, but you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting to me. Uh, like, I don't know. Best VR AR. And this is the other thing is the winner, Resident Evil Village. Uh, that seems curious to me. Just a little bit. I have to... Can I, like... How do, what do I need to do here? Oh, do I need to get them... Oh, I gotta get the... This lad all the way up. Okay, without dropping it. Gotcha. Um... Resident Evil Village, maybe the VR in it was good. I just think it's kind of, um, it's kind of like the, the remake conversation again. Is like, is it fair to give the award to a game, like, a polished game, but one that was not necessarily made for VR and then given VR support? Again, not downplay downplaying, like, how good that support was. Maybe the VR support in, um resident evil village is really good but like you know there's not a lot of 
actual VR games, like exclusively VR games that are coming out. And I think it's fair to say that the ones that are, are like hopefully given more, giving more thought to how VR games are being played than one that is just being given support to play in VR. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I'm completely off base on that. I haven't played Resident Evil Village. Um, I also haven't played Horizon, Call of the Mountain, Humanity, Gran Turismo 7, or Synapse. I don't know where those games are. Are they like exclusively on PSVR? It's a, uh, it's a little bit of a frustrating thing. Uh, what is this? Okay, that just destroys everything, huh? Why did I want that? Very strange. Um, it's a it's a frustrating thing being in the in the VR uh, at all, cause you know like figuring out like you know what's the next big VR game. It's hard to even say, and like a lot of them are being developed by Facebook, and so you basically can't play them if you're using an index and or or like any uh, of the more open source VR headsets. Yeah, I, so I don't know. Like, if the VR industry isn't dead, it's sur sure being killed in its sleep. You know, like. Uh, it almost feels disingenuous to hand out an award. It's like, you know, let's let's see an award for like um, best support for VR. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, these, I, I don't want to have to keep going down there to, to get you guys on. VR, best community support. Uh, this was a controversial announcement when they announced like the. Um, that this was going to be an award because Destiny 2 was up for grabs and uh, they had like, as soon as this announcement was made, they had recently just fired like most of their <laughs> their community support, like laid off a bunch of people. Like, again, that conversation never kind of happened, but uh, it would have been a, truly a spit in the face if Destiny had won. Um, you know, I, I'm sure like m maybe the people that worked on it would still like to see it win, even if they no longer work on the title itself. So I don't know questions uh, there, but uh, yeah, Destiny didn't win. Instead, it was Baldur's Gate 3, which, you know, fair. Uh, they've did, I don't know what constitutes best community support, but I imagine um, part of that is like listening to the community and, you know, giving the game uh, like support after launch and making sure that what you know people's needs and wants are maybe addressed uh and i definitely think that baldur's gate has had that um it seems like they've they've been updating the game quite a lot to ensure that it's uh continuing to work and working better than it was when it just hit 1.0 uh shoot so i mean yeah fair uh, baldur's gate like it really, it really knocked it. Larian knocked it out of the park, park, and uh, I, I'm, I'm very supportive of like whatever they win. Um, and I, as far as I know, they did it without like horrible exploitative measures. Like I didn't really hear if they had horrible crunch. Uh, I didn't hear about like I, I didn't hear any con like weird stuff. From Larian, which is, it feels like that should be its own reward or own award because like it seems like almost every day i'm hearing about big name companies like uh here's one uh sega just announced like a whole bunch of new titles that came out and they also like secretly kind of laid off all of their potential union workers um, because people in Sega were starting to unionize and they just went ahead and like laid all of those people off to ensure that unions a union isn't formed in Sega. So congratulations Sega, you win the award for like biggest dipshit. I don't know like can we have that award? Um, and it, it like it always feels like such a, a, a flashbang of like oh yeah uh, we just did this really shitty thing. By the way Sonic 
Heroes 2, here's Sonic Adventure 2, and here's Crash Bandicoot 7, and here's Crazy Taxi 11. And it's like, you know, and, and I, I'm just as guilty as anyone else of like, uh, oh yeah, I mean, I want to look at the, you know, sequel to the game I, I, I have a vested interest in. I liked this game. I want to see it. But at the same time, when are we going to have that con you know, the conversation? When, when are we going to say like enough is enough and maybe we shouldn't be supporting games from companies that are like taking horrible advantage of the actual developers and I don't know. Weird one, huh? I bet you didn't expect this video from me, but like, you know, I, I do think about this stuff a lot. Maybe I'm not very good at formulating my own thoughts on it. And maybe that's why I don't do these videos because uh, I don't want to argue about it because I'm not very good at arguing. I know that about myself. I'm not a good debater. I'm not going to make an essay video about this. I'm not going to talk like do a, a call out video or a drama video because I'm not going to win the debate. But um, like it's it's still like it's frustrating to see this stuff and and if the game awards isn't going to talk about it then maybe i i am you know like maybe i'm not going to do a good job but at least mentioning it would be better than the game awards because they didn't even bother mentioning it they didn't even talk about it so you know that's this is me doing my part i suppose best mobile game honkai star rail i actually tried to play this game specifically but it didn't work on my phone so uh the best accessibility award does not go to honkai star rail because i was not able to access it what did i play on my phone what was like my what was the, the uh my most played mobile game this year what was it I, I, play, I put a ridiculous number of hours into Ascension, like the deck building game has an amazing mobile port and I've put a lot of time into that game. Um, so yeah, that I, I did that. Um, okay, so these guys aren't, they, they're just like slack goos. Not sure how we're doing. Oh, okay. I think I know what I have to do here. Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Okay, that's uh, that was a mobile game that came out and uh, it was nominated. I, I I haven't played a like new mobile game in a very long time. Not that there's I, I, like I don't want to say there's no good ones, but definitely every time I look at a mobile game and like think of playing one um they just they always feel like super exploitative of like you know filled with gotcha and i'm sure honkai rail is too but like i i heard that at least it had an entertaining story and was actually fun so i considered it but um yeah i mean maybe it, it deserves a win um the mobile market right now feels so i don't know arid <laughs> arid is, is the word that comes to my mind um it like so many games feel like they're not trying to be fun as as much as like mashing your dopamine button as much as possible to to get the either the ad revenue or the uh you know price of uh, of, of buying some zappy dollars so you can like continue whatever menial task inside you know some kind of idle clicker but like i i heard good things about honkai star star rail uh i'm, I'm so i'm not gonna speak on the quality of that um, maybe maybe it was amazing maybe i'll try it i did get a newish phone you've heard it slam against the ground a couple of times this year so uh maybe maybe it's you know <laughs> i can get that to to work hold on i just want to uh, this is kind of a nightmare. I just want to get this to like wrap around. There we go. 
I mean, it's it's a, it's it's fine. I'm sure this is gonna be fine. Maybe I'll just like get this to like wrap over a little bit. I do, I guess, want to mention some of uh, some of the announcements that were made as well. Like, no man, the Hello Games, the No Man's Sky devs announced a new game, um, which. That's uh, that's an interesting one. I have thoughts. I don't know if they're necessarily appropriate. Um, hold on a second. This is this is going to be a difficult level if I don't have some apply some thought to it. Um, so best debut indie game. So this is one of the two indie game awards that were handed out. <laughs> And, um, yeah, we have Cocoon, Dredge, uh, Pizza Tower. Oh God, oh God, hold on. No, no! Oh my God. Oh my God, I, I did I save it? Oh, come on. Hold on. I'll get back to shit talking the game awards in just a second. Come on, just roll a little bit. Uh, uh, oh my goodness. Can't believe I made that. Um, Cocoon, Dredge, Pizza Tower, Venba. I haven't heard of Venba. What is Venba? What in the world is Venba? Uh, well, it must be on a platform that I cannot access because I can't. I don't see it on Steam anyway. Um, I did play the demo for Viewfinder. You can find that on my channel. I liked it. Um, I, I think it was a little bit derivative of other puzzle FPS puzzle games in its past and it sounded like it was super short, but I mean I don't mind short uh, Short means I might actually complete it. So uh, Pizza Tower was amazing um, Pizza Tower is like is fresh and creative and had a style to it that I, I Really appreciated so I did really like Pizza Tower. I do really want to play Cocoon So there is that I just got to find the time and money um Dredge looked like a lot of fun. In fact, I did play the demo for that as well. I'm pretty sure you can find the video for that on my channel as well. I, I liked it. Um, did I love it? Would I play that game for like 20 hours? I don't know. Um, but I do really like a puzzle game. So uh, I, I, I was wanting to play um, Cocoon. I, I really did want to play that one. I kind of am not a huge fan of the, the um, flash effects on this page. But uh, Cocoon looks really fresh and it looks really original. And I know that the devs, I mean, they did Limbo and Inside and, uh, you know, they're very good at making uh, a puzzle game. Um, I have to play Inside. It's, it's something I've been meaning to do. Uh, I do have it. I picked it up in some kind of bundle. Um, let me just apply some more thought here. Oh, I guess they're, uh, oh, that sucks. I guess if it's some, if something is stretched enough, uh, wow, I really bungled this, didn't I? Yeah, Cocoon, it, it looks like a winner. <laughs> what else can I really say? It looks like it deserves a win, even though I haven't played it at all. Um, and I, you know, I think that all of those games are certainly on the same playing field of like creative games that uh, deserve acknowledgement. So, uh, you know, I, I'm cool with all of that. That seems like, you know, super fair. Uh, I wish I knew what Bamba was. That sounds like it might be something. Best indie game got, it was Sea of Stars. So how come best upcoming game Sea of Stars wasn't on that? Like, I don't understand the criteria for some of these awards. They're a little strange to me, IMO. I wonder if I'm doing this wrong. I wonder if I'm supposed to um, have 
these things droop down instead of, well, whatever. Um, we're just gonna, oh, oh God. Yeah, that's, that's not it. Cocoon, Dave, oh yeah, this is, this was like very controversial. Um, Dave the Diver was uh, nominated for best indie game despite being financed by like a very like triple a company like the company is almost as i understand it on the same playing field as rockstar so it's kind of like if rockstar uh came out with like a grand theft auto d make um you know it, it would seem a little bit unfair and a little bit disingenuous to uh then offer game uh, indie game of the year to uh to, to to that right and i think this is like one of the things like you know it's i keep i guess i keep harping on this a little bit is i i, I think the game of the game awards um don't really understand uh games you know i like um jeff i'm gonna i wonder how many times i've mispronounced his name Yeah, I'm, hold, give me one sec. Oh, thankfully, I, I have not, I don't think I have mispronounced it that badly, but I'm horrible with names. Um, did like kind of semi address uh, David Diver being nominated despite like not being really in any game. And he's like, ah, you know, that was really it. Like <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't really much else to it. Cause, you know, uh, definitions are vague, like, you know, insightful stuff my dude um yeah uh maybe 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 we should maybe you should talk to some developers i i, I feel like that would be a really good start um because i think most if not all developers i saw talking about dave the diver was like this is bullshit <laughs> this is not okay um just what the heck you know uh, it feels really unfair when someone puts a lot of time and effort into uh, making a thing and then like a AAA company's like, hey, we're indie, we're up and coming. Let's, uh, we made, we got this little pixel game here. Um, we're just gonna like, you know, it was a, uh, you know, we, we, we only subsidized like a couple hundred thousand to make this game. So... You know, it's indie. Okay, bud. I can't remember how to do this one. I think I always try and like build like super uh, tight. Cause you just have to like get this depressed down, right? Um, what was next? Sea of Stars won best indie game. I haven't played Sea, the sea of Stars, but I heard it's good. I also heard it's like the first part, like it was very much a first part and not, um, not really like, I don't know. I wouldn't want to say unfinished, but like, as I understand it, the story wasn't finished. Uh, this, I, I really didn't plan that out well, did I? That's what I heard anyway. I didn't, you know. What would I give best indie game to? I, you know what? Give Shadows of Doubt some love. Give Gravity Circuit some love. Um, those games are genuinely like amazing. Um, Pizza Tower, I, I give it to Pizza Tower. You know, um, I'm not saying a Sea of Stars doesn't deserve it, but like there's so many games that came out this year. Being in Wonderland, that was a really cool game. Um, give, give it to uh, like I really like Crop Rotation. That video is coming out soon. Um, I really liked, um, what, like, there's so many games that came out this year. Uh, Shard Punk Verminfall was good. Mars First Logistics, although that's an early access. Hexarchy came out. That was a really good indie game. Uh, Shogun Showdown, I've been playing a lot of that. That's a really good game. Desktop Dungeons Rewind. I know it's a remake, but, I mean, uh, if we can give it to, um, whatchamacallit, 
Advanced Wars, if we can give that, you know, a strategy sim award, I think we, it's fair to, well, I think it's fair to, to, to give uh, Desktop Dungeons Rewind some love because, like, that game was good enough, the first one uh, was good enough that it should have gotten some kind of, some, some awards. Maybe it did. Maybe I should, you know, look that up. Uh, why not? I'll look, I'll look up for just a moment. Did Desktop Dungeons win anything? I'm just looking at the um, Steam page and see if it wins, like, if there's any awards. It's got an 81 on Metacritic. Desktop Dungeons. I wonder, did they delist the original one? No, they didn't. Good. Um, the first one did win independent games, but so it won an award for IGF. All right, all right, that's fair. So uh, by my own criteria, uh, Desktop Dungeons Rewind should not should not win. Best ongoing game, Cyberpunk 2077. You give that game, you give that award to Caves of Cud, and you I, I give it to Caves of Cud. I don't care. Cyberpunk. You're gonna have to take a. You're gonna have to develop your game for like another good 15 years before I think it's uh, it's gonna compete. Best ongoing game, my my butt. You give that to Caves of Cut. Maybe give it to, you know, uh, as long as we're having this conversation, give it to. Um, oh God, I'm gonna embarrass myself now. You give it to to Adam or uh, what was like the, the one of the first traditional roguelikes on uh, Steam in the first place. Let me just sort by traditional ro roguelike. Uh, I was going to say you could give it to... Give me a sec. You could give it to NetHack. You could give it to uh, Tales of Magiel. Uh, Magiel. I, I'm like really forgetting like all the... Like all of these games have had content still put into them. Like new stuff put into them. Um... You know, like, there's so many games I've had, like, oh, here, best ongoing game. What about uh, Star Sector? I know, like, I haven't even, like, played enough of that to, to say, but I know, I know it deserves best ongoing game. Like, the amount of time and dedication some of these games have had. Um, like, not to downplay Cyberpunk, but I do think it, you know, I don't think it's an achievement, to be honest what they did like they it was such an unfinished game and then to like just update it to working condition and then like win an award for that feels really um not earned in my opinion in my opinion that seems really crappy uh best ongoing game like there's so many games that have come out and have been continued to be supported Oh, no. For, like, years to come. Years and years after they came out. Like, Project Zomboid. I, I know I'm listing indie games, and, you know, this is not the point of the uh, Indie Game Awards. The Indie Game Awards are purely to uh, celebrate the very polished and the very uh, successful, the already successful. But, like, um, I just think it's, it's a little bit of a shame. All right, hold on. We're, we're, yeah, there we go. I'm almost done here. Games for impact, uh, Chia. Space for the, what? For a thought provoking game with a pro social meaning or message. What is Chia? Oh, it's on, it actually is on Steam. Oh, I did look at this. This looked like a lot of fun. Yeah, sure. No thoughts. Uh, Terra Nil, that's a great game. Venba again. What is Venba? I've never heard of this Venba game. Oh, it is on Steam. Oh, I did hear about this game. Yeah, it looks really fun. It looks really fun and wholesome. Like, I don't use that word very lightly. Uh, it looks like a game that would actually make me feel good. You know what I mean? Um, best performance, uh, Neil Newburn, Newbin. I, I think they played Asterion and yeah, earned. Um, I think it's, it is funny to only include one performance here from Baldur's Gate 2 or th 3, 
but also if you included every good performance from either Baldur's Gate or every game that came out on this list, it would be in the hundreds, I think. Um, so sure, fair, cut it down if you want. Uh, best audio design, Hi-Fi Rush. I, I, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I get it. Best score music, Final Fantasy 16, sure. Best art direction. Alan Wake 2, sure. Um, although, I, I don't know, I think Hi-Fi Rush looks a little bit more creative, but I haven't played enough of Alan Wake 2. Um, best narrative. Alan Wake 2 kind of sweeped a lot of this. Best narrative, Alan Wake 2. That's a curious one. I might have, uh... I don't know. That's fine. Best game of the year, Baldur's Gate 3. So, I don't know. I've got a lot of, um clearly divisive and controversial thoughts about the game awards and um you know like what do you think <laughs> it really is it's really all it is is like what do, what do you think like you know uh i know people are on twitter are talking about doing their own kind of like ga indie game awards um because like indie indie really is underrepresented on the game awards to, to, to be more uh, precise, they are not represented. Um, like, having a couple of awards to, uh, like, validate the existence of indie games seems a little bit, you know, that's, I don't know. I think we could do better. Um, and I think a lot of other people think so too. Um, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this. I know this is not my usual kind of video. Um, I, it's, I, I was excited about World of Goo too. There was other announcements made as well, but I, I think maybe this video has gone on a little bit too long. Um, you know, No Man's no Man Sky Fantasy, basically, uh, looks fine. Oh God, all right, well, that's, that's that. That's a, that's a good way to end it. That's, here's a visual representation of how the Indie Game Awards kind of went. Um, we're just gonna, gonna go ahead and flush, flush that. All right, yeah. A lot of lips on the screen right now. A lot of, lot of lips. A lot of lip service, you know? Um, congratulations to everyone who won. Um, I hope that no one gets too mad at this video, but uh, let me know in the comments, what did you think of it? Uh, and um, maybe hit the like button, consider subscribing. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.